I'm back. I've got Ray Novak from ICOM with me, and Ray has been obviously playing around with the 705 a lot lately. And Ray's the type of person that, that gets out there with radio, uh, not just outdoors, but also out of hotel rooms and pretty much wherever he's at, he likes to set up a little kind of portable station. So Ray's going to walk this, us through kind of what he's been doing with the 705, kind of building out his portable shack, if you will. So how have, have things been going, Ray? Well, I've been playing around with the 705 for quite some time with a Japanese version. Yesterday I received a U.S. version of the 705, nice color outside box which was a real surprise and three manuals one in English one in Spanish and one in French and through the manuals to the side after taking a photo and going hey look everybody there's three manuals and this afternoon thought I would try an experiment that I did when I was out uh, on vacation and that is connecting the 705 up with uh, wireless LAN to do PSK 31. And that's that image you sent me, this one here? Yes, sir. It got set up. So you've got a, looks like a loop antenna, and then you've got the 705 with a battery on the other chair. And how do you kind of interface? I don't see a computer there. So how are you interfacing all of that? Well, that's actually, uh, I'm on the second floor of my house, and that's, I'm trying to remember now, that is on the east wall of the house. And to make sure that there were no strings or wires attached to it, I'm a good 20 feet away from the radio. Okay. Uh, you can see right in the middle of them, there's a uh, uh, AT&T hotspot. So I'm using that separate from my home internet uh, because the home router is locked down. And we tried it earlier with you to try to port through and uh, actually, to the outside world, this AT&T router is also locked down pretty good. Yeah. But so it, it looks like you're using, so it's a, it's a wireless hotspot. So wherever you have a cell phone signal, if you will, you could, you could use this setup, right? It's kind of what you're using. Well, actually, what, what I'm using it for is on the wireless LAN side of it. So I'm within the network. I'm not going over the Internet. Oh, right. Sure, sure. So... Um, uh, my friend Tommy Martin, who does Amateur Logic TV, we were talking about scenarios, and he made a comment that he has a, a uh, portable or a travel uh, wireless LAN router that he takes. That way he doesn't have to go through the multiple layers of security at the hotel and all of that other kind of stuff that goes on. And really keyed me into using a portable uh, wireless router. Yeah, and that's, I think, that thing that you also sent me a link to. And now this isn't sponsored by ICOM or my channel or anything like that, but there's a multitude of options online on Amazon for these little travel routers that you could use for Wi-Fi, you know, in your hotel room or wherever you're at, really, if you're on the go. So if you go out camping, you could have one of these set up running off of a battery pack, or some of them have their own internal batteries from what I've seen. Mm-hmm. But that provides your network to connect your 705 as well as your computer system. Right, because the 705 has wireless LAN, so you're just connecting to that box or, or a box like it. In your case, you're using the uh, AT&T wireless. And then you connect your laptop to it or whatever you're operating on. I guess you hypothetically could use something like a tablet if you had you know something like that set up for whatever mode you were using and that's what's allowing you to control the radio and and it, it shows here you know you, this is this is your call sign looking you up on uh on psk reporter you you've been getting out there just fine with your are you running the five watts or are you were on a battery pack so i guess 10 watts is that how that works i'm i'm on a bio no uh, lithium iron phosphate battery so i'm getting a full 10 watts out a little bit of swr uh because that loop antenna's got very high Q on it so yeah it's got a very narrow window and then playing around on the human body in the near field and things like that 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 gets to be fun to try to <laughs> to tune out so it's an interesting it, it's an interesting kind of experiment and that's one of the reasons why I wanted Ray to come out here and talk about this 
so you have you have wireless LAN capability. You obviously have the one connection that we've been talking about for a while if you wanted to go straight to a laptop for your audio and your cat control and then right. you also have bluetooth which is an area that we'll be looking at in the future as time goes on there's some it's great that the capabilities there that we can maybe develop something in the future us amateurs to to maybe leverage that even uh for yes. doing connection which i think is is awesome so it's kind of like multiple capabilities of control that the 705 is going to grant us well, one of the one of the interesting things is with the Bluetooth, there's two parts to it. One is for the serial port, which is the SPP protocol or serial port protocol. Then you have the hands-free and headset protocol for the audio. So yeah. today's software developers do not have it set up yet to use that audio portal like a sound card. So if you take think about what we're doing today, we have two com ports over the wireless LAN network. One is a serial port for the CI5 control. And then the other one is the virtual uh, com port to the internal sound card. Mm -hmm. So the software developers are going to have to enable and work on the, um, the audio portion of it. I have yeah. used some software for logging with the Bluetooth. Um, I'm not endorsing it, but I do use Ham Radio Deluxe for certain events that I do. And it really surprised me that the first time I tried it, I used the auto sync and it gave me the parameters of that COM port and I was able to use it to control and log when I was doing voice contacts. Right, so let's break this down what Ray just said. Ray was using HRD um, and other applications would do this, but there is a, a Bluetooth serial port that gets established off the 705 and he could have logging and cat control over HRD. But I believe in parallel, you told me about this before, you were running uh, some headphones that were Bluetooth and you could PTT. Uh, via the headphones while still connected to HRD. Was that was that what you told me? That, that is correct. So that means it's really not that far away from having, you've got a serial Bluetooth connection and simultaneously a headphone connection. And that headphone connection is what we would need to leverage to pull that audio in over Bluetooth. And since the PTT exactly. control's already there, that's also very interesting for, for multiple reasons if you use Bluetooth. So I, I want to show you what I'm doing right now. And, and like, like you showed with the PSK reporter, the signal was getting out 10 watts. Mm -hmm. uh, I did work a couple of cues, and I'll, I'll show that before we were talking. But how I'm doing this is using the uh, ICOM remote utility portion of the RSBA1 software. I created the server. I've got two different settings one is for my home internet or wireless system the other one is my hotspot and once i configured that it gives me the statistics of it being connected and then i have in a radio list in this radio list you can have the speaker settings a mic setting and then the virtual audio port now this is the audio settings coming out of my computer. Yep, that's definitely FT8. I'm sorry, what was that, Josh? I was saying that's definitely FT8. I heard that. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that is that, that port, and then we have the modulation. And earlier, what happened, Josh, is it switched over to the mic. Ah, uh, okay. That, instead that's... of staying on the virtual audio port. Got it. But what it also does is it sets up a virtual COM port, which is COM port 10 in this okay. configuration. And it has people that have experimented with the earlier versions of the RSBA1, it was a nightmare to configure. Now with the setup wizard, you tell it, you click which one of the boxes you're using and how you're going to set it up. Mm -hmm. And it makes it a lot easier to configure and use. The only thing that you have to be 
conscious about is what ports are forwarded and making sure that you're doing port forwarding. If you're right. going from in this top configuration, which is a radio that has a server built in, which the 705 does over the internet to your computer. Um, I don't have the RC28 connected to it, but I would be able to remotely control the radio with the RC28 to change the frequencies. Okay. So um, I'm going to bring the audio up just a little bit because one of the things I'm going to do next is bring up a different share and bring up Ham Radio Deluxe. And so you can got, hear the audio change as yep. I change the frequency. Yeah, so you've got HRD <coughs> is running on your remote laptop, not connected physically to the to the radio. You're connected over the wireless LAN using the remote software and going over those virtual audio ports and also cat control through HRD. Right. Very and cool. what, what I did on setting it up, I'm using it because HRD does not have the address and all the commands for the 705 i'm using my 7610 profile okay and change the address in the radio to 98 hex mm -hmm. so it would have that control yep the interesting thing that i've i've found was the the baud rate and i'll bring the icon remote utility back here to to view the baud rate is 19.2. Okay. And I've, I've had some developers that have already, they've released the 705 in their software. And I, scra I was scratching my head and I go, do you guys have one? Well, no, we've read the commands. And when I explained to him the baud rate, the first thing that I heard was, oh, well, it's going to be impossible to do the band scope. And after we go through what I'm doing here with WSJT, WSJTX, I'll bring up the RSBA control portion of the software and show you the band scope works just fabulously. Is that the upper limit? Is the, the baud rate is 19200? It is fixed. Ah, okay. Interesting. So oh, oh to for wireless LAN. Yes. Or no, Got no, no. It. For the C no, period. For the CI5. Period. Okay. The 7300 well, went a bit higher, right? Or it goes a bit higher? Uh, yes, it does. It goes quite a bit higher. Uh -huh. um, I think I haven't heard any explanation why other than it's a lot easier knowing that it's 19.2. Don't worry about trying to set the CI5 for this and then the USB for that. Just put it at 19.2. Okay. So I've got a little bit of a busy screen going on right now with uh, HRD for the control, HRD for the logging software, and I will upload these two cues that I did here earlier today. And you can see uh, uh, Whiskey 9, Victor, Tango, Delta. Mm -hmm. I sent him a NEG 14. He sent me a NEG 15 on 20 meters. Right on as well as Kilo 8 India Golf, I sent a negative 11, he sent a negative 15. Very good. So this configuration works right now. We're, we're receiving and uh, it was updating, of course, right now in between cycles for it. The band scope on the top, Josh, thank you for helping me set that up. It does look a lot neater than what I was looking at earlier. Mm -hmm. I'm somewhat of a noob to FT8. Uh, honestly, I don't pay a whole lot of attention to the band scope and jump around. I'm, I'm looking more at the band activity and trying to contact whoever I'm hearing at that point. For sure, yeah. So it can be done this way. And here's a couple of other FT8 contacts that I made earlier this month 
Oh, actually, I made three that made three contacts today: Osco, Kilo, Oscar, Four, Bravo, Charlie, Kilo. But I made two contacts when I was up in New Mexico on vacation. Okay. Yeah, I see that. Very good. And it was the same setup as what you're using right now, right? Yes, just was using the Japanese version of the 705. Ah, yes. Gotcha, gotcha. Very good. And I, and I was using a different uh, wireless router at that point. Mm -hmm. Now, so that, that's been fun to figure out and play around with and adjust. Yeah, I mean, again, it's it's another option where in the past, a lot of QRP radios, portable radios, you kind of had a certain way that you had to connect the radio to your computer, and that was what you did, right? That was the game you played. So that's that's uh, that's pretty good to hear that you you know again you've got it working in a, in a different way with this wireless LAN. Did you want to show the RS uh, RSBA one waterfall? Yeah, I, w I wanted to go ahead and shut everything else down now sure. except for the remote utility. Mm -hmm. um, it's two distinctly separate parts of the RSBA1 software, the remote utility, so you could connect into the radio remotely, and then the RSBA1 remote control software. Uh, the dealers have the version 2 website under any of the products that are that use the RSBA1. Okay. Uh, the Connect set, here we go, 705 wireless LAN, uh, the remote yeah. utility that I'm using, the COM port, mm -hmm. the baud rate's blacked out. You can't adjust it whatsoever, so it is fixed. Um, the audio ports that we're using, I tell it to connect to it. And here go. we go with the scope. I'll go ahead and close that down. Just like on the radio, you either have fixed or centered. Mm -hmm. On the uh, band scope itself, I was showing earlier with the, the fixed. Oh, I do need to bring that utility back up. Stand by. Uh, where did I... I know I just hit it, but oh, right there. Bring my audio frequency up so I can hear it here. And I see it. Yeah, I see. Uh, that's definitely on. Oh, you you you've moved it a bit, but I can see where the the WSJTX location is. You can see it up there on the right hand side of where you're centered. And having played with this, I actually use this uh, software as well. Um, you can adjust the waterfall somewhat and change it. You can actually make it a lot longer if you wanted to stretch it out, all that fun oh, stuff. Yeah. So you've got a lot of different set things you can do with it as far as settings go. You can change the colors, the fixed yep. edges to it. So. If we wanted just the um, CW portion, that would help to pay attention to what I'm typing here. Yep, so there you've, you've kind of limited it down some. A little bit off frequency there. I'm in USB, go to CW. There you go. And the filter changed in the radio and it just, you heard the audio come up. Yep. Yeah, now, I, I mean, obviously, it, it. hopefully people are getting this or they're familiar with the ICOM remote software, but you can, you could hypothetically set your 705 or, you know, any ICOM radio that supports the, the software up at home running the remote server and then you can run the rsba1 software off of your laptop portable wherever you are so long as you set up your network appropriately right 
And this is what you'd see. You'd see this control interface. You also have the, uh, what is it, the RC28 rotary encoder that goes along with, uh, with this software as well right. that'll run off USB. Are you right mouse click or left mouse click? Yep. Your tuning knob. Um, you've got all your different controls for it here. Even your set mode on how you want things configured. Yep. I was trying to remember um, where one of the settings were because you don't have to go with the the dials. You can actually go with the sliders on it. Oh, you can change them from dials to sliders? I didn't know that. That's that's cool. Yeah, I'm trying to remember where that command is. I remember you have to have like you have to be disconnected in some cases from the radio before you can change some stuff. Oh cool. So it's it's fully so the software's been fully updated for the seven oh five. Yes. I noticed I've already noticed some things like the max power output was set to ten watts and that looks like it was a part of the drop down. Uh, there's a couple other things. Obviously, the WLAN, that's a new thing that I haven't seen before. Um, using it on the 7300, that would make sense, right, given that it's, right. it supports the WLAN. Oh, right here, controller type. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. Slider. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like that. I'm going to make that change. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean i like the clicking i like being able to click but i also like just being able to yeah there you go oh right on very good so yeah unfortunately the guy that was an expert on a lot of social media he's a silent key now and that was whiskey six uh fcc oh okay and he was he helped uh with this software or uh, no, no, no. He just fell in love with it. He had friends all over the world. Right. Helped them set up the radios. Uh, I think he had like six 7610s all around the world, a couple of 7300s that were through uh, computers. And if he wanted to see what it sounded like over in Europe, he'd just log on with one of the, uh, with one of the um, server lists. Oh, sure, 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 on sure. what he yeah. wanted to do and then could click on a different radio. Wow. Yeah, that's that's a way to do it. In fact, my 705 has got your username and a unique password for you. But unfortunately, I can't hack the AT&T to do port forwarding. Yeah, yeah, sometimes that happens. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll figure something out for sure. Yeah, that little tease out there for you to... Um, <laughs> Hey, you could play with a 705, Josh, but uh, AT&T's got you locked out. Oh, shucks. It got me it got me locked out of your box there. <laughs> yeah, very good. Well, thanks, Ray, for, for hopping on and, and giving us a little bit of a teaser on, on what we can expect in, in new interfacing modes for the 705. I know I will definitely be talking about that. I definitely want to hit all of them. I uh, I, again, that's that's one of the big things. When I heard about the 705, I was like, okay, we got we got the single cable check, but then let's add the wireless LAN, which is awesome, and then Bluetooth. Leveraging all those is going to be fun to experiment with. So, you know, thanks for showing us your solution set that you have here. And one of the other things is uh, the ICOM has always published our protocols for the CI5. Mm -hmm. And what we've done, instead of every radio having a new, unique command structure, what we've done is we've just built on top of it. So the original radios that had the CI-5, um, what it stands for is Computer Interface Version 5. There was a CI-4 mm. at one time in the late 80s. Mid, mid, to, mid to late 80s, and it was on our... Oh, I think it was on the 731 or 751. Okay. I mean, it was a D25 plug. It wasn't your RS-232 plug. Okay. But then the, when the CI-5 came out, that was around the IC-735 series. And this exact same command, a set of frequency that was in the 735 is in the 705. Okay. 
And yeah. I know you got a lot of programmers that love watching your show. It's there for them to play around with, figure out what to do, and just hack away at it. Control your radios. Yeah, there there's some uh, there's some interesting ideas that are already kicking around in my head on how we can we can leverage this in in interesting ways to to not just change the the way we interface with the radio, but also what equipment we might use in the field, you know, with with the radio, given the uh, the wireless LAN and the and the Bluetooth connection capability. So yeah, right. very very cool stuff. Very you know very exciting time in ham radio as always. Alrighty. Thanks, Ray, again, and uh, you know I'll post links in the description for for more information about the 705. But I can't imagine there isn't uh, a ham out there right now that doesn't know the 705 is coming and they've got it on their radar. So, again, Ray, thanks for making yourself available and taking the time to be on the show. I appreciate it. All right, thank you. And uh, as far as availability, I know that same question comes up no matter what oh, yeah. podcast I get on. Yeah. End of September, we should be seeing them towards the end of September. All right. I'm excited. <laughs> All right. Thanks again, Ray. All right.